All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Uh, Coach Adam here, Mount Hamilton Youth Soccer Club. Today, I'm extremely excited, and it's a really special interview that I'm doing. Uh, today, we have fellow Hamiltonian, former Mount Hamilton player, Vancouver Whitecaps number 27, and my friend Ryan Raposo. Ryan, thanks for being here, buddy. How are you? Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me, Adam. Buddy, um, it's pretty surreal that I get to have this interview with you, so I'm buzzing about it, so I hope that you're buzzing. And I know that our players, once they see your face and, and see our familiar faces together, uh, they're going to be buzzing as well, too. So first off, congratulations, man, on being drafted fourth overall in the MLS Super Draft. Like, just tell me, how did that, like, tell me a little bit about that. How did that feel on that day, you know, in front of the camera or whatever your name came up? How did that feel and, and how does it feel now? Yeah, I mean, I was nervous throughout the whole combine, the whole process. My agent was telling me that, uh, you know, I was going to go to the seventh. I was going to be picked seventh by Columbus Crew. Um, you know, they were very high on me. And uh, Vancouver Whitecaps, I didn't even talk to them at all at the Combine. So I And uh, they didn't talk to my agent, so we really had no clue. Um, and then the night before the draft, I was on my phone at a probably midnight, and I seen Vancouver Whitecaps start following me on Instagram, Twitter, like all social media platforms. So I kind of maybe got a hint, but, you know, it's a draft. And at the end of the day, it's it's up in the air, and you don't really know. So when I got picked fourth, you know, I was super, super excited. I know, um, I know personally when, when I was there with you, because you had all your family surrounding you, um, and it was a really special day. And I was really happy to, that, to be even part of, you know, watching you become the professional that you are now. Uh, it was quite a moment for you individually, but I want you to know that how, how much of a big moment it was for Hamilton and how much of a massive moment it was for Mount Hamilton as well. Um, right. And speaking of your success and how you, you know you're a successful player now, and I mean you have a big career, you've already had a you know a career there um, in your amateur. Now you're gonna have this massive career um, as a pro. What, right. in your opinion, is like the keys to being a successful footballer? Um, for sure, dedication, discipline, and obviously it's easier said than done. Um, but for me, it was always, you know, grinding and, you know, getting through all the politics and all those things that come with football. Obviously, from Hamilton, it's when I was younger, it was tough to be put on um, a stage kind of to succeed. So I had to, you know, travel to Toronto basically every day. Um, but obviously Mount Hamilton's a much bigger club than what it was back then. And, you know, the, the kids at Mount Hamilton are put on a platform to succeed. Obviously with coaches like you, Alex, around and, you know, that type of stuff. But my biggest advice would to be um, – to be like, just keep going. Um, it's gonna, there's gonna be lots of ups and downs, and definitely more downs than there are ups. Um, but I would say keep, um, keep pushing. And if it's something that you really, really, really want, then you'll get it. You know, I have a lot of uh, football friends that you know, one day they really want it. They train like maniacs for a week and then, you know, they're kind of over it because, you know, they're not seeing results and then, you know, they go they get back on it. So for me, it just has to be a consistent thing that, that you really want. You mentioned about ups and downs and, and that, that kind of brings you to another question that I have because I, I know as I know that you've come over an injury at a time when it's very crucial right before your draft year. Can you explain a little bit about how the challenge of that injury, you know, where, you, where were you at mentally right when it happened and then what you had to do to kind of overcome that? Yeah, I mean, I've had a decent amount of injuries in my life. Broke my leg, obviously, in my senior year of high school. Um, so I was getting recruited decently highly from, like, average uh, NCAA schools. You know, I broke my leg and I feel like it was meant to be because then Syracuse stepped in obviously a massive school and everything worked out, um, you know, and then in my sophomore season, I kind of picked up an injury in preseason, um, which was tough for me mentally. I remember it was like the third day of preseason and I struck the ball weirdly off of volley in my foot. I mean, I still kind of have the injury. 
like I don't even know what happened. It went back. I felt, you know, I could I could barely walk. I went home, my ankle blew up. And I remember just sitting in my room saying like, you know, like after everything, all the time I put in in the summer, like I can't believe this was happening, blah, blah, blah. But um, we had a game. We had our first season game. I was like so close to telling the staff that I couldn't play. But I remember just popping like two Advils, massaging my ankle, getting whatever, taping it up and playing. And now I'm like, that's, I was so happy I ended up playing because I got another goal and an assist in that game. Um, I mean, my ankle killed and mm -hmm. everything, but, you know, I, I pushed through it. And it I mean, us. That, that just outlines how it is to, to push through certain things when you, when you can. Um, mm -hmm. Mentally, it's a tough thing to overcome, right? Because, you know, not just physically, it's, we have to remember we're humans and we have these mental thoughts and emotions yeah. that we have to be able to control. And as athletes, it's absolutely vital that we control those uh, in a positive manner. And I think, honestly, after watching you in that preseason and, and I've seen you play, and it's a short little start to the game there, um, mm. but I see you fit in. And I think that everybody and everybody that watches kind of goes, you know what, we got a real player here from Hamilton. So um, another question I, I, I want to ask this because for me, for, you know, for many years as an athlete and for all those athletes, we love routine and, I know that I'm, I'm not sure exactly how you like it or what, if there's anything specific that you do, but I want you to take us on a journey through game day with Ryan Raposo. What happens when you wake up from your playlist of music to, uh, to the, till you go to bed, whatever it is, can you take us on that journey? So game day, um, you know, I wake up at a good time. You know, I definitely don't sleep in. Um, one thing I do often is I massage myself. Like a massage, go through my calves, go through like um, on the trips. Sorry, do you Sorry. do any, do you do any foam rolling or anything like that? Yeah, yeah, of course. I have my foam roller. Um, I have a massage gun actually that I bring on trips. I go through my calves, hamstrings, quads with my hands. Um, but first things first, I wake up, shower, get my stuff on. We'll have a a good breakfast, which usually includes. Um, a bread of some sort, toast, avocado, like an avocado toast, uh, lots of fruits, a uh, little bit of eggs. Um, and uh, yeah, that's basically it. Maybe some fresh orange juice and definitely start getting the, the water in early, you know, get hydrated early, um, which should actually start, you know, I usually drink a lot of water the, the day before, right. two days before. Um, but when I do wake up, you know, get some water into my system, get myself going, uh, leading up to the game, I'm usually relaxed on my phone, watching TV, uh, make sure that I'm not laying like in an awkward position that, you know, will make me sore later in the day. Um, what, what usually helps for me and you'll see a lot of professional clubs do is game day, you know, you'll have lunch and then you'll go for a walk, like a 30 minute walk or something, get get the body going because you don't want to be in the hotel room or inside all day so you'll get some fresh air walk for 30 minutes get get yourself going get back to the hotel and and do whatever you need to do um again i'll go through my body massage you know watch some videos of my favorite players uh, such as neymar hazard you know guys that kind of i try and emulate on the fields um and then just before we leave you know, I have to shower, um, and then we head out. I usually um, stay off my phone on the bus. I think about, I visualize what I have to do on the field. I think about the venue and field we'll be in and the exact positions I'll be put in. So, you know, I play on the left wing, so I'll, I'll think of, uh, you know, the ball getting switched, me taking it down, looking up and seeing the right back and me taking them on one-on-one, -on -one, the different types of moves I can try and do and be confident with. Um, yeah, and then we get into the locker room. I'll, I'll definitely foam roll, massage, get my pre-activation going, get my muscles going, and, and yeah, head out for the warm-up. I like that. You, you mentioned something that, that really that really hits hard with me, especially at Mount Hamilton, you know, because you've coached with us um, yeah. over the past few years and in camps and stuff like that, too, especially. But you said visualization. And it's funny that you said that because I've over the past few weeks, I've been doing online sessions with our with our players. 
and mm. I've been t letting them know how important visualization is and how important it is, for example, when we're doing our sessions, uh, like, you know, they're by themselves in their small area because of COVID and all this, but I'm asking them to close their eyes for a moment and envision themselves in a happy place where they want to be, whether it's, you know, in a stadium with thousands of people, but it's so key. So everybody listening and watching now, all you players, you can hear Ryan Raposo, number one, isn't on his phone right before the game, but he's definitely visualizing and going over moments. And I think that that is so important for players. And it's not used enough at a youth level when they can because it's using their imagination. So thank you for pointing that out. And thank you for going over the day in the life mm -hmm. of Ryan Raposo on game day. Um, like I said, we're always creature of habit. So that's the thing that we like to like to know as players. Um, you also mentioned your favorite players. Uh, that was one of the questions I was going to ask. So you mentioned Neymar and Hazard. So is there any other players other than Neymar and Hazard that you growing up sort of watched or wanted to be like to emulate like you're saying? I mean, my favorite player, and he still is my favorite player, um, has to be Cristiano Ronaldo. And it's not just because I'm Portuguese. Um, you look at, you look at uh, his mentality and his work, great work ethic and his discipline, it's, it's unmatched. It's probably one of the best in the world. You hear stories of him at Manchester United. You know, I, I seen some stories of him at Juve. You know, the team travels home to Turin, 2 a.m. Guys are tired. They get back to the locker room. They just want to go home to their family. And, you know, Ronaldo's putting on his training gear, hopping in the ice bath and rolling out. You know, that's, that's what's best for your body. But obviously guys are too tired or down to what he eats, you know, just plain chicken breasts, lots of greens, vegetables, salad, you know, he's, he's very disciplined. And on the field, his mentality is, you know, he's a champion. Um, he, he scores goals and he wins trophies. You know, that's ultimately what you need to do as a, as a footballer, you know, try and help your team win football matches in any way possible. And he, and he does that. That's for sure. Um, I have a lot of, I've been doing some uh, online sessions with the kids, as you know, and I'm looking at a lot of what Cristiano Ronaldo does and, and it's, it's crazy stuff. So, but that's the next level and that's where you need to be to be a professional. So, yeah. Uh, as I'm kind of wrapping things up here, um, just sort of a philosophical thing. It doesn't have to be soccer, but what what to you is important as a human being, especially during this time? What is important? Yeah, like what's important? It doesn't have to be soccer. It could be anything. What's important to Ryan Raposo? Uh, family, you know, at the end of the day, you know, obviously I live here alone. But, you know, as a kid, sometimes, you know, you could get distracted with some – friends or doing this doing that you know you don't want to be with your family but you know as you get older you really appreciate your family because at the end of the day you know friends may come and go girlfriend boyfriend may come and go but at the end of the day um, you always have your family so that's important uh, that's a great answer well well we'll finish it off there um with actually let's finish it off with one last little bit do you have any advice for young players aspiring to be a professional like yourself in the mls just, just a quick little, if any advice that you could, that you could give our players and the Mount Hamilton players that you already know, uh, to be in the platform where you are. Um, I would say again, kind of what I touched on at the start was just work hard, and if it's something that you truly, truly want, like I've known ever since I was a kid, this is what I wanted. You know, I didn't want to be a police officer or this or that. It was professional footballer and there was really no second option you know it's I did everything I had to do in order to make this happen so if you guys feel the same you know you can do it and if you're just playing soccer just to play soccer that's also fine you know it's it's a great sport you you you'll meet a lot of great people along the way for sure perfect great advice well you guys have it now. That's our interview here with former Mount Hamilton player and professional soccer player for the Vancouver Whitecaps, Ryan Raposa. Ryan, thanks a lot and can't wait to see you back in action when we can get out there. Of course. See you later, Adam. Thanks for having me. Cheers.